L.A. is black and gold, baby. It is good to be with you once again, Mario Rees. I'm Dave Denholm. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. You see that flag waving? You see the flag waving, the black and gold flag? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Loud and proud here after a big, big derby win on Saturday. 2-1 yep. the final. And certainly we'll break it down. We'll crunch some numbers. We'll go all in on this thing. And it was a massive win. All, all these games are, no doubt about it. They're always crazy. They're always exciting. They're always on the edge of your seat. Intensity. This one was really intense, I thought. Uh, physical, yeah. no doubt. It had everything, and it had goals. It had goals early in this match, and then mm -hmm. uh, things settled in a little bit, and LAFC were able to hang on defensively as the Galaxy poured forward late in that match, and they couldn't break through. What a win, Mario. Good to talk to you, brother. Just a, a great victory for the black and gold. Dave, I did not think just the two goals would be enough to get the yeah. win. I mean, as we know, these are usually high-scoring, blow-for-blow battles. But props to that LAFC team defense who locked down that very dangerous new-look uh, Galaxy offense who's been racking up goals so far this season. And now uh, the boys from Carson, they didn't have any any clear chances, if any at all, to, to shoot that goal. And so for me, the key was that LAFC team uh defense and and yes by the way let me just mention this that was a penalty and you couldn't reverse that call that penalty on bawanga you couldn't reverse that i mean uh he beats uh yamani 1v1 yamani doesn't know what to do he's got Dene coming at him yamani's got the dancing feet and he goes right at him passes him up and when he passes him up that's whenever the slide tackle comes from behind and he tries to pull it back right he tries to pull yeah. the the slide tackle back but by then it's already too late. The contact was yeah. was made. Was it hard contact? Was it a hard tackle? No, but no. it was enough to kind of distract Denise's pathway uh, to the to the goal. Yeah, I know it's not going to make Galaxy fans feel any better, but man, we've been on the losing end of so many of those calls with VAR. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going. I don't care. I don't care. I'll take it. It, it doesn't matter whether it was. Or, here's my opinion though on this. This is my final opinion on that, Mario. And this is LAFC Plus, the podcast, each and every week. Mario Rees, Dave Detholm, and you. And there was no way they could overturn it, whatever the call was. I feel yeah. if he would have said no penalty, then we probably would have been out of luck, and they wouldn't have called it a penalty based on the evidence of VAR in that sense. People forget when you're just, like, breaking it down so slowly in every frame and all that. Like, that's just ridiculous. And this goes beyond just that one call. You know how I feel about VAR. That's one of the biggest beefs I have with it. Everybody tries to yeah. slow it down to every frame and like what happens. Like, come on. The game is played at full speed. Stop it. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And you know what? That had nothing to do in the end with the Galaxy losing. I'm sorry. They couldn't get anything going offensively. As you said, they had the one chance. They got it. Okay. Good goal. They got back in the game. Took them four opportunities on blocks that bounced right back to one of their players before Aude finally put it in for the goal. Right. I mean, it was like, even I thought that was a lot of luck, let's be honest, for the Galaxy. If any one of those balls, whether it hits the post or the ones that twice come bouncing back to them on block shots, if they go five inches either way, there's an LAFC player there ready to clear it. So those are the breaks of the game. That Did Ibuanga misses an open net? How often does that happen, right? I mean, yeah. like it, those things do have – LAFC dominated that game. They gave yeah. the Galaxy 60% of the ball. And said, yeah. come and score against us. And they couldn't do it. Yeah, I was going to talk about that, Dave. It. LAFC, I mean, they gave Galaxy 67 to be exact. 67% of the possession. And if you know LAFC, that is expected under manager Steve Tarundola because LAFC does not need possession. Even at home, LAFC, yeah. Yeah, even at home, LAFC can control the game, win the game with only 32% of the possession. And when you look at expected goals, LAFC had a 341 to Galaxy's 1.43. An XG That's rating for, for, for LAFC yeah. was the highest in the entire league over this past weekend. And honestly, it should have been three or one, four or one, like you said, if Bawanga finishes that chance that he skyrocketed over the goal. Uh, we all wish we could have had that one back. And to close the game out would have been a lot easier if that one goes in. And the three one looks a lot different than the two one. Three one looks a lot more fair in my estimation. Look, the yes. shots were the shots were equal. We talked about this on the post game show after our broadcast. Nineteen to eighteen, it looks like okay. Well, that's because LAFC was absorbing a lot of that pressure. Galaxy were getting a lot of long distance looks. Nothing really 
came of much of any of them. And they had four galaxy had four shots on goal to LAFC's nine. We had less than less than 40% of the possession. We had nine shots on goal to their four. Now, some of that, was those four shots on goal. Was those the, the reflections, the deflections that came back and forth, back and forth that they finally scored on? Was that the no, four chances? I don't, I don't <laughs> think those count Mario. That's a good question. Okay. But I will say this, look, Coming up a little bit later, I do I do have some, uh, I guess, some uh, right, some wrongs about MLS teams, which we will talk about. And one of them yeah. is the Galaxy. It was a good game. Yeah. It was a it was a tough match. It was hard fought, no doubt, like they always are. And you know, again, Joseph Paintsill maybe gets a shot off at the end, and somehow they score, and it's two two, and it's a just a bitter disappointment. You know what I mean? Anything can happen in those yeah. games. Could have been one more little bounce and it's two two. One more bounce or two more bounces and it's four one us. You know, I mean, it's just they're really close matches, no doubt about it. But yeah. LAFC deserved it. They were the better team of the day. I don't care what anyone says. And uh, Mario, you talked with Ilya Sanchez afterwards, and boy, yeah. he was. I gotta tell you, we talked about the edge going into the match for some of the players in the pregame. How. They, they were kind of a little tense, not in a bad way, though. Like, they know what was that state. Ilya Sanchez afterwards, man, you knew how yeah. important it was to him, right? I mean, yeah, the way you, you talked You could him- feel the emotion and the passion here in my walk-off interview with him, as you will see right here. How does it feel? He's, he's celebrating here. Ilya, how does it feel to uh, earn the bragging rights of L.A. after winning this derby match here? Hard-fought win against a very good team. First on the table for a reason, for many reasons. But here at home, look at this. We play with an extra man. Uh, it is very difficult to beat LAFC at home. We proved that. Now we have to improve on the road. We go to Portland. Let's keep this journey going. Describe the pride that you have playing here at BMO Stadium in front of the 3252. I have no words. Uh, you know, Mario, I'm here. I came here to play. Uh, for this team, for this club, for these supporters. And this is a reward. Uh, we say at the beginning of the game, they came here to enjoy, to fight, to win. They cannot play, we play for them. We enjoy, we fight, we win for them. You uh, willed your guys to win in this one. Congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Great stuff there from Ilya Sanchez. And you can just hear it. Now, yeah. Ilya is a very passionate player. We know that, Mario. But there was a little more to it. After this yeah. win against the Galaxy, I think. I love that line where he says, the fans came here to fight and win. The fans came here to fight and win, <laughs> but the fans can't play, so we fought and won for them. Oh, I just love it. He's even, he's poetic in his interviews sometimes. I just love it. Yep. You know, he takes some time to think about it, actually. It's yes. Not just, it's not cliched answers. I mean, look, right. every answer has been said seemingly in every sports interview. You know what I mean? At this point. But he's actually thinking through stuff. He does and giving yes. you the truth, you know, and like, and that's what a captain does too, on some level. You know, he's just a he's a great captain, great player, great man off the pitch, no doubt. And it was just great to see that like fire and passion that we expect from Ilya Sanchez, and he just doesn't fail to deliver. Speaking of fire and passion, Mario, the thirty-two fifty-two as Ilya was yeah. pointing to, they were still standing there like they do throughout ninety minutes, throughout one hundred and eighty minutes, virtually before and after matches, and and. Boy, the TIFO this week was yeah. spot on. You, it, you, we were talking about it before the match, right? We're st- Mario and I, in case you're wondering, before a game, we'll go down to the sideline there and, and look up at the 3252, who come in most of, earlier than the vast majority of the crowd. Let's say that the 3252 mm-hmm. starts coming into their seats, so they're getting the atmosphere going way early. So we're down on the pitch, Mario and I, and we always like look up at the 3252. Occasionally, there's some interaction there. Uh, great fans that they are with us and uh we're just getting a feel for what's going on maybe we watch some uh, warm-ups but we all like i think you i remember you asking like what's the tifo gonna be today yeah. which we don't always talk about uh-huh. but and usually they're spot on this thing was incredible i love it yeah. mario uh you better check yourself before you wreck yourself that was the <laughs> song that was playing in the background and i love that i love how the stadium also you know has the theme song to go along with with the banner with the tifo banner and yeah. that was the song from ice cube you better check yourself before you wreck yourself i know the galaxy was feeling good coming into this match coming into the proper los angeles bmo stadium uh but lafc handled business so yeah that was now, a for great our, our many our many people who are on youtube watching 
There is a picture of the the TIFO if you haven't seen it. So if you're just living, listening on a podcast or if you're not from LA, you're wondering, well, why is this TIFO any good? Well, there's some buildings in downtown Los Angeles, my uh, neighborhood, and uh, that um, are abandoned. Well, not abandoned. They never, nobody ever lived in them actually yet. It's uh, These are high rises even that were being built. Some uh, graffiti artists got to them since nobody's yeah. living there. <laughs> and this is kind of a, a picture of that. And that's what some of the art looks like on those buildings, actually. And if you're from LA, you know, if you live in LA, you know what this TIFO was all about. No doubt about yeah, it. It's Anyways. right next to LA live, right next to yeah. crypto arena. It's right there. The biggest yeah. uh, skyscraper building there. It's a uh, luxurious uh, condos there. People are supposed to be living in there, but I don't know if anybody's lived in them yet, but yeah, it was no, uh, they it haven't. Was a nice two, two and a half miles from, uh, from BMO stadium, from our stadium. So right downtown, mm -hmm. of course, and, uh, yep. in the neighborhood, great TIFO, no doubt. Shout out to the 32 52 as always. They were incredible in this match too, uh, all game long. I just look when I do a, a broadcast, there's, and I think most broadcasters will tell you this. There's not much that's going to distract you when you're in there and I, you can call it the zone, whatever. I mean, you feel it. Um, yeah. I've been feeling pretty good about the broadcast this year so far, and there's not really much that's going to distract me when I'm doing it. Even an LAFC, LA Galaxy game, you got to give you have eyes everywhere. I hear the 3252. I notice, yes. right? And I know players mm -hmm. talk about that where you're not supposed to hear, you know, and no, you do. The 3252, yeah. they make a difference. And I don't often hear chanting in other places necessarily in terms of when I'm broadcasting. You're in the zone, what, like I said, you're focused. But you hear the thirty-two fifty-two, no doubt. Ilya about said it, they so. played with an extra man. Ilya said it. We played yeah. with an extra man in this match. It's hard to beat us at Bebo Stadium, and they proved they proved it. Yeah, no doubt about it. One of the uh, we can go to the radio call. In fact, the the goal, yeah. I guess that wins it. Great goal by Timothy Tillman off the same set piece they exploited Nashville with. If you remember that one early in that match, uh, if you get a chance, go back watch the highlights on Apple TV or wherever on MLSsoccer.com. It's a carbon copy essentially of the goal in the fourth minute that really set the tone and then one, one on the Aude goal. And, you know, the galaxy deserved that goal. They were coming, you know, going up and down the pitch playing well, but then Denis Buanga draws the PK. Here's how it sounded finishing. What is uh, his third goal of the season now? That for you in regular season play, he's 0 for 12 against penalties all time. Can did he make it 0 for 13? Here he comes right foot shot. Yeah! Something to cheer about again as LAFC have regathered the lead here. In now the 36th minute after the penalty kick goal from Denis Buwango. Denis earned it, he finished it. And LAFC are back in the lead at 2 1. That's funny. I see Mario doing the Denis, uh, the, yes. the Denis uh, cheer afterwards. Yeah, doing the Denis celebration, if you will, yeah. after that goal. So that proves to be the game winner. LAFC win 2 1. We did just talk about you heard it on the clip there during in the broadcast, but it is time for part of our history, and it's a guy who was playing in net for us last season, and now he's with the Galaxy, John McCarthy. I want to I want to say you know, boo that he goes and signs with the Galaxy. You know that's whatever you're dead to us now in terms of sports, John. But he did have seven big saves that kept this game close, Mario. I mean, they were good saves. <laughs> Otherwise, this could have been a four-one kind of thrashing. You know what I mean? Like this. Yeah. He kept him in the match. Yeah, what a top man J Mac is, right? The day yeah. that he returns to BMO Stadium for the first time, and he comes onto the pitch, and the first thing he does is looks over at the thirty-two fifty-two, and he just claps it up for them. He gives them the the heart sign, you know, just giving total respect for them. <laughs> and then he goes out there and he plays his guts out, plays his hearts out, just like you said. He made numerous saves that were huge and uh, kept them in the match. So. Respect to J-Mac, oh, as always, you know, always an LAFC hero. It's fascinating, though, that he's never stopped a PK in regular season play. Yeah. And yeah. yet he was the history, or the, I'm sorry, he made history by being the hero of mm -hmm. the 2022 final in penalties, stopping the PKs yeah. that uh, that Philadelphia Union tried. So he stopped two of them, just cold, point blank, and that was it, you know? And it, it's such a fickle game, man. It's such a tough game sometimes. And, you know, look, I'm glad he lost. But he did. He had a great game.
bottom line. Yeah, and he him played, it, he played well. He's faced Denis in training on those PKs numerous times, so that made it super, super interesting to see yeah. that in the middle of the game. I and mean, he probably knows which side Denis prefers. So then it it kind of plays with you mentally. I know where he likes to go. Is he going to go there this time, or is he going to switch it up because he might know? You know, so they know each other. So that was a really interesting part of the game there, and and Denis capitalized on that one. Well, another former teammate of Denis and John McCarthy's with LAFC, part of our history. Chicho Arango, Mario, scores again for RSL. Yes. yes. The guy's red hot. He gets hot. You're right. He's a guy who, he's a, he's a goal scorer in buckets, you know, like a bunches. And just, he'll go yeah. games where he doesn't do much, frankly, and it's just not flowing. And then all of a sudden, he's four goals in four matches, five goals in five matches, whatever. So not a big surprise that Arango is kind of helping lead RSL and, and certainly uh, one of the top goal scorers in MLS. So still a pain in He's the neck. Tied to every for team first, right? Yeah. Tied for they, first for, for the most goals in MLS. I mean, he went up and got that header like a true pro and then headed it down like you're supposed to and yeah. found the back of the net. I mean, it's a true ultimate goal scorer that he is Chicho. And we talked about the kind of player that is, uh, it reminds me of the Carlos Rees. Remember, he was a Galaxy forward, played with a couple of teams in MLS, FC Dallas. A couple of, yes. You hated him when he was. you were playing against him, and you love him on your team. That's kind of Chicho Arango, right? You, you don't want to mm -hmm. face him. You hate him. He's always just getting under your skin, looking for the, you know, the foul to draw. He's committing fouls against you. He's tough. He's physical. He's always running around. You hate when you're playing against him and you love him on your team. That's Chicho Orongo to an absolute T, you know, like he's just, yeah. RSL fans can't get enough, no doubt about him. They're in third I, in the West, they are. you know, yes. and because of him, bottom line, yeah. you know, they got some good yeah. players, but he's just red hot. And one more for part of, part of our history here, Gareth Bale was at the stadium. Ah. That was awesome to see Gareth Bale there. Wow. And he's yeah, hanging he, it up right here with J-Mac and uh, two heroes there from the MLS Cup 2022. It's good to see he's not gone on to the Dave Denholm diet post retirement. He still uh, looks in good <laughs> Are you shape. Kidding me? Are you My kidding me? Goodness, a guy can he could probably still go out and play ninety minutes, no doubt about that. And probably would For score sure. three goals. But yeah, he looked good. He uh, they gave him a, like a, a ceremony, like you said, right before kickoff. A uh, John yeah. Thorington, Larry Freeman were down there with him. So good to good to welcome back Gareth uh, in, in front of such a huge match too. Of course, the Derby. Yeah, all eyes upon it as well. Uh, youth movement. It wasn't a it wasn't a massive day for LAFC youth, right? Mm -hmm. We had David Martinez. He would have probably seen time had he not had the red card the game before, learning that lesson. Um, we didn't see much uh, from anybody else, frankly. Omar Campos was available. That's a good sign on the substitutes bench, coming back from a yes. little bit of a nagging injury, but did not play uh, except for Christian Oliveira and very active. No doubt. Nobody had a bad game for LAFC. They no, played well. Right. He, he was a big part of trying to keep that front defensive line. You know, he was he and Denis, many times I found myself calling their names deep in our own territory. Now you don't want that all the time, but it sometimes you gotta have it, yeah. right? You have to have help defensively from your forwards and from your wingers. And uh yeah, he did a good job of that. But Mario, there's a name I want to talk about with youth movement around MLS. Okay, I love this. I love when yeah. we get to learn about new players around the league, especially the young ones. So we get to well, keep an eye on these guys. This is why I'm talking about this gentleman, though. He's yeah. young, but you're going to be like, what are you talking about him for? He's been around for like four years already. Obed Vargas from okay. Seattle Sounders. Keep an eye on this guy. Keep an ear out for him. He's still only 18 years. He doesn't turn 19 till like the summer, I think. He's been around. Yeah. It feels like he's been around for 10 years already, this kid. He's just so rock solid. Yeah, no, he had an injury. He's had a couple of injury issues, and one of them was pretty, you know, rough. And it, he was out for a while. So that kind of, I guess, for lack of a better term, stunted his growth a bit as a player. But it really hasn't stopped him. The guy just comes back, and he's he's tough as nails. He's not going to show up in the score sheet a lot with assists and goals. That's not his game. He's a defensive midfielder. He's a bulldog in there. Eighteen still, Mario. With all that, I think he's played over 40 MLS regular season matches already. And that's with that injury, that longer-term injury he had that really slowed him down. This guy, it, it, it just reminded me, like, you know, you're watching that Seattle game getting out of hand. I'll talk more about that coming up. Yeah. And you're like, holy cow, this kid is still only 18. You forget how good he is, how 
long he's been around. It's like one of those guys. It's it kind of reminds me of a galaxy player now, Diego Fagundes, mm-hmm. who when I think he's in, it feels like he's in his 20th MLS season. It's not that, but he started <laughs> when he was like 17. You know what I mean? Like they start yeah. so yeah, I think he might have even been younger than that. And he's been doing it for so long. You think, oh, he's got to be 45 years old by now, but he's not. He's not even that old. Well, Obed Vargas, just really good, really solid young player, and yet has all that experience too. So it's not like we're not just talking about guys who are young because they haven't played or, or nobody's no, you know, nobody really knows much about this guy's been around and he's still only 18 years old. Amazing. And he plays for a great club too in the Seattle Sounders, a great club in MLS and a great manager in Brian Schmetzer. So he has a lot going for him there in Seattle. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, hear more about the Sounders coming up. But f- first, football fit check time here on LAFC+. Yeah. Plus. And uh, we'll start with a uh, a saga for me, okay? Okay, Let's You know go. about my T-shirts, right? I got 30 black T-shirts. This is what I wear. Yep. You're wondering every week, you're like, Denholm, you're wearing the same – no, it's not the same T-shirt. Well, <laughs> I mean, in theory, one of them, might, I might have worn it already more than once. This is episode eight. But I have like 30 black T-shirts and then I just rotate them. Sometimes I'll throw them away if, like, you know, you get, you get like a spaghetti stain on one of them. You know, like perfect for football fit check. Well, my yeah. wife finally was like looking over some of my t-shirts, and she's like, "Uh, yeah, it's time for a very large <laughs> new batch here." All right, it's about uh, that time, Dave. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I'm probably still gonna go with just the black t-shirt, the all black t-shirt. But she was like, "Yeah, you gotta, you gotta smarten up here." So uh, yeah, we'll see, sharpen up a little bit. We'll see what happens, but. Wanted to lay that out there so we're not just uh, – I'm not just wearing old T-shirts. I do try to rotate them, but she was calling for me to uh, rotate a little bit harder through the T-shirt uh, string there. So, Hey, uh, uh, you know, Kanye West is a fashion icon, and he, all he wears is black. Thank so you. It, black is a very fashionable color, Dave, and especially on you. Dipped in all black looks very, very good on you, Dave. This is the first time today anybody's compared me to Kanye, so I appreciate that, Mario. Thank you. Of course. Happens all yeah. the time to you. <laughs> Just, it's the first time today. That's it. So we continue with football fit check. Mario, you have one that uh, you're going to talk through here. Who's yeah, the next, another player who's who who played well on Saturday was uh, Murillo. Jesus Murillo, of course. And you see him here dipped in the green varsity jacket with the Prada shades. Ooh. We featured we featured Prada now in back to back episodes now, Dave. So I think oh, our right. wives. You talk about your wife. I think our wives are going to be very proud of what we're doing here on Football <laughs> Fit Check. Mentioning Prada. I mean, this is going pretty good. Yeah, now, the Green bad. Varsity jacket, I believe, I think that's inspired from another Colombian uh, musician uh, named Fade. Fade okay. is from Colombia, and he's tearing up the Latino music scene. And I think that's where he kind of got that green kind of theme, because that's what Fade does to his, that's his color scheme that he's famous for. Okay. But yeah, I mean, look at Moody, look in the with with the Prada shades and the in the green varsity. I love that. Well, I got to tell you, if you are seeing this on YouTube, you're seeing the uh, the the still shot of uh, Jesus up there. This is one of my favorite color combinations. You heard me talk about this. It's the Oakland yeah. A's, that green and the yellow. I love it. I don't know why an MLS team hasn't gone this route, uh, you know, more permanently. I love this jacket. This jacket. Yeah. I know that the shades look great. Don't get me wrong. Like those are you know probably maybe more of what people will look at but i gotta tell you that jacket just popped out popped out at me right as soon as i saw it so a good yeah, call the here. cream sleeves the cream yeah, sleeves oh, with that. the green and the yellow love it love that love that no <laughs> doubt and i actually think the you know he makes the right choice with a white t-shirt underneath rather than a, yeah. a color you know any kind True. of any even black anything else would have taken away from the jacket i think so uh excellent choice by jesus mario there go ahead Top Moody. Notch. go ahead yes, yes. Top-notch defending, top-notch uh, uh, football fit check there from Jesus Maria. We appreciate <laughs> that. If you find anything around MLS in terms of you see something, maybe it's live or you uh, you know during a match, whatever, uh, and you want to you know let us know about it, hit me up at Talk Soccer Mario. Where can they hit you up about football fit check? At I am Mario Ruiz, at I am Mario Ruiz, and great call, Dave. Yeah, send us photos, send us video. If you see something fly, something fashionable around the uh, MLS soccer world, we'll throw it up on a football fit check. That'd be great. And if you can't find the photo or video or whatever, just let us know about it. We'll try to hunt it down, too. We have maybe yeah. some options that we can find uh, if, if you're seeing it somewhere. Yeah, no doubt about it. More on Seattle Sounders. Now, we didn't 
necessarily plan it out to be a Seattle Sounders show here, but let him cook. We have to go back to the man up up top here who's had some issues with his injuries. Seattle themselves have had issues with injuries, certainly, but as this guy goes, it seems, so go the Sounders, Mario. Let him cook. You lead us through this one. This guy was on fire. Yes, yeah, Seattle 5-0 to earn their first win of the season. Much needed, of course, in their slow start to the Sounders. But Rui Diaz with the brace over the weekend, <sighs> his first goal. Oh, my goodness. It was a thing to see. Uh, if you haven't already you know, catched it, make sure you go check that out. The power on his shot, the one time, hitting the side netting. No keeper was going to stop that, Dave. That was an amazing hit from Rui Diaz. Yeah, it really was. You know what I noticed about him, too? He yeah. generates more power on a shot from just a small little, like in just yeah. a just amount of time. Meaning, yeah. there's so much power. Just he doesn't like wind up the, you know, like it doesn't take him long. He 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 gets the shot away quickly with so much power and accuracy. The combination mm -hmm. of all those is as impressive as anybody in MLS. Like there are guys who maybe hit the ball harder. Right. Or maybe they're a little more accurate or what, but he gets it off so quickly and so powerfully. That's what's so amazing about it. He doesn't need much space. He doesn't need much time. And you're picking it out of the back of the net. I mean, the guy is just truly incredible. There's no doubt about it. And again, if he gets going, that makes everything a lot easier for the Sounders. There's no doubt. This is not going to be easy for me, though, as we move on in this segment. Okay. As we go around the rest of MLS, Mario, you know, we like to keep it honest here. So. Yeah. I hate to do this, but I've got a I got a mea culpa here. I, I was wrong about a lot of stuff in a lot of teams. So when I'm wrong, you know I'm right a lot. You know, first yeah. of all, I'm I'm the most modest person in the history of soccer, right? We know that. No doubt okay. about it. Always have been, always will be. But I'm wrong sometimes. And you gotta admit it. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is, but you gotta come out and uh, be honest about it. We don't get enough of that in sports, I don't think, right? Around social media and stuff. Everybody everybody's always right. Mm -hmm. But you never hear about when they, you know, when they're not, which is most of the time, no matter what they say. Well, there's a few teams I want to highlight about how wrong I was. First and foremost, yes, Seattle. I believe somebody will uh, probably uh, correct me if I'm wrong, which I'm not. I called them garbage earlier in the season. They were a garbage team. That's how they were playing at times. Mm -hmm. They were. Still, shame on me, right? I was too harsh, and I'll tell you why. Because it was a lot about injury. And we knew that. We talked a little bit about that then. And it's a great organization. We said that. The fans are amazing. They'll get it turned around. Well, they turned it around quicker than I thought they would. And uh, not just because of a one-time game against Montreal going across the, you know, the world here. And Montreal's been on the road since the beginning of the season. And Okay. But 5-0 wasn't the story. It ju wasn't just the story. Uh, the Seattle Suns are not going to be a bad team like I thought they might be after. You know, like I was wrong. They're going to be fine. They're going to be, you know, marching up the standings, no doubt about it. They're too good. Uh, too good of an organization, too good of fans. Pains me to say it, but I was wrong about Vancouver too, Mario. Yeah. If you remember, I said they, I didn't necessarily believe in them. Uh, I still don't think they're like a top, top quality team. They're missing a little bit of that. But I think I was wrong about saying they were going to be very average, so to speak. They're They're better than that, no doubt. They're and off they're to showing. their best start in franchise history through six games. They that's pretty impressive. Oh yeah, and they're getting it yeah. done. They're beating they're beating teams up uh, yeah. four nil over Toronto at home. Again, Toronto's a little you know worn down. They got the injury with Insigne, so they're not where they should you know maybe want to be. But I was wrong about Vancouver. They they still again need a little more. They need maybe one or two more players to kind of just get you know the whole roster depth and maybe push a guy who should be a really good bench player out of the starting 11, you know, like a couple of, maybe a couple yeah. of pieces where, wow, they could really start to threaten to actually, they, the problem they with are Vancouver in first. Is, yeah, go no, ahead. I mean, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you're right. We should highlight that. You were about to say something and you, you should say that. Where, where are they in the standings, Mario? Yeah, they're sitting atop the West. I mean, first <laughs> place in the West with four wins and only one loss. And Vancouver is coming here to BMO Stadium next month, May 11th. And let's let's not forget LAFC play Vancouver in match day two of League's Cup later yeah. late in July. So that's, those are going to be some battles to look forward to there. Yeah, I never really like to play Vancouver, honestly. I know we've had some success, especially at home, but we've had some yeah. troubles. We've yeah. had some troubles up in Vancouver. 
Often. We faced them a yeah. lot last year, like back to back matches, and then we're kind well, of doing it, was, it again. Yeah, this Champions year. League, right? We we kind yeah. of owned them in the Champions League last year. That was yeah. nice. A couple of couple of three nil victories, but mm-hmm. we we don't have a lot of great success traveling up there to BC Place. So yeah, it's not a tough, it's not an easy place to go. Another team I was wrong about, and I know a lot of people are going to give me grief for this. I don't care. I'll tell the truth. I was wrong about the Galaxy. They're not the most overrated team in MLS. They're pretty good. Okay, and I can say that uh, they're not great. They got a lot of holes in the style of play. I mean, we talked about how I thought the style of play leads them to give up goals more so than their defense is bad or anything like that. You know, people, oh, their defense is terrible. The back line is no. Sometimes it's it's style. Sometimes it's tactics. Sometimes it is poor play. But they're going to give up goals because of the way they play. They're not the most overrated team in MLS, but they're not great. So it's a little bit of a mea culpa for me, only in the using the term most overrated. Uh, I thought LAFC just absolutely handled Joseph Paintsill. That was a big factor, right, in the victory. Uh, did he do much of anything, honestly? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to sum it up. Nope, that's it. That's exactly right. Palencia uh, yeah. was all over him. Wow. Little yeah. Pitbull Palencia. Yeah, he's so strong and so quick. He's tough. He's tough for attackers to get through. Take note of Sergey Palencia if you're yeah. not an LAFC fan. I'll tell you why. Nobody's pushed Joseph Paintsel around physically. No one. No. That guy is a beast until he came to BMO Stadium on Saturday, and then it was all Palencia. And Paintsel didn't know. Paintsel did not know how to handle it. To his credit, Paintsel wasn't diving around looking for calls. I mean, he took it. He took the beating, and then sometimes he got fouls called against Palencia. And Sometimes they were fouls, called, you know, like, but he played them straight up. Paintsill, to his credit, didn't try to, you know, there was no messing around. No, he just, he went after him and couldn't beat him. Bottom line. In Dave, but that better. Galaxy, that Galaxy defense has a lot to figure out on those set pieces. I mean, did well, you that's see true. In, yeah. In Tillman's goal, that, that cross came in from the header off of Ilya in the front and the near post. Then it goes to the back post where Tillman is. And there was, Five white shirts marking absolutely nobody. If you go and look at the yeah. replay, they were marking nobody. And they went straight to Tillman, and Tillman just knocked it right in. So they got to figure out that the defending of the set pieces if they want to have any success down the line, especially in the playoffs. Yeah, I, it, this is not a defense of the Galaxy specifically, but it is hard to defend that type of play that you're talking about. Mario's mm-hmm. talking about when a, a tall, big player runs to that near post and just isn't trying to score, obviously. They're trying to, you know, we all know the play. You're trying to deflect it to the back. But that's hard yeah. to keep defending through that, right? You're, all your yeah. energy is going towards Ilya Sanchez there, essentially. And if it falls correctly when he heads it back to the back post, it's going to be hard to stop that. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying, look, it's a breakdown. Yeah, you got to work on that defensively, but it's not easy to defend either. People forget Elias Sanchez is 6 1, every bit of it, too. And he doesn't like come across like that necessarily all the time. He's tall. He's a big man. Yeah. He is tall. And yeah. he can really, yeah, he, he can really get up. And people just don't, I think they get surprised by that sometimes. The guy gets up in the air and he can, and he's only one of, you know, Murillo and, and Long, who are great in the air. So there's plenty of weapons who can pull that play off for LAFC, but they work on that. That is a very, very big weapon. But it's hard to that's, defend on that second ball. That's I mean, that's crucial. That's now seven goals that the Galaxy have conceded on just set pieces. So they got to mm-hmm. figure that out. They're the worst team yeah. in MLS on set pieces. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. So those are the teams, though, I was wrong about on some level. And yet I still – look. It comes down to, in MLS, just we've talked about it a million times, scraping, clawing, scratching your way to three points. It doesn't matter how pretty it is, how ugly it is sometimes. This is the regular season. It takes a long time. It's many months. It's 34 games. Just get any win you can. And every win is a, is a beautiful win, no doubt about it, right? It doesn't matter. So uh, you can nitpick stuff all the time, and we will on this show, but you can't be a uh, complete playing a one Derby win. And even, you know, look, the thing you take away from that for me, Mario, if you're the Galaxy, is we didn't really have a lot of chances. Like, we didn't – we had a lot of the ball, but there was just no dominance there, really, at all from the Galaxy. Even in in stretches where they had a lot of possession, because there were stretches of the match they had less than others, 
But there were some stretches, and I'm talking 10, 15 minutes, Mario, where they might have had 80% of the ball, yeah. especially later in that match. Just nothing coming from it. So I think LAFC put out a bit of a blueprint. Now, do teams can do they have the players LAFC has to defend the Galaxy like that? Maybe not. But I think Galaxy showed some people how to do it, especially against Ricky Pooch, who is a fine talent, but was really not effective in that, that match either, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was good to see. Uh, a team that Mario, you kind of uh, drew my attention to them again, is uh, New York Red Bulls, Mario. Where are they at? Holy cow. Look at this team. Yeah, they wow. They just grinded out another win in Cincinnati, handing FC Cincinnati Oof. their first loss of 2024. And Forsberg, a player that we've been watching, was key in, in that match. Uh, he had a nice pass to Van Zier for the game winner. And Cincinnati, they were the supporter show winners last year. Now the Red Bulls now hold that spot as leaders on the supporter shield race. And they have Lewis Morgan over there who leads the league in goals with six, tied with Chicho, of course. Uh, Van Zier, he, he leads the league in assists with six. And Van, Van Zier also leads the league in XG rating. So uh, LFC fans have something to look forward to when Red Bull come to BMO Stadium in the next home game. So after this game against Portland, the next home game is against New York Red Bull. I'm excited for that one, Dave. It's, it's yeah. an April game? I forgot. I knew we yeah. played them this year. I totally lost track of the schedule then. I didn't know they were in April. I thought for some reason yeah. it was later in the season. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, at least they're coming <laughs> to our place. But still, they're red hot. They're top of the uh, division, they're con top of their conference, co top of MLS's supporter shield race. So, yeah, that'll be a very tough game. No doubt about it. But glad we're playing yeah. them, obviously, at BMO Stadium. And then there's the final uh, person we want to talk about in this show which we haven't actually talked about much, ironically, especially lately because of injuries. Uh, just the greatest player in the world, right? He's just <laughs> the best player in the world. That's all. We'll save him for, what, 37 and a half minutes into the show or however long. Just Lionel Messi, you know, come off the bench after missing some games with injury and then, you know, nothing but a, a game-tying a game -time goal, then the game-leading assist. Now they did end up giving up a goal to a very scrappy Colorado team. And Inter Miami yes. only got the 2-2 draw, but Lionel Messi. You know, there's other people around the world trying to point to other players now who are fabulous players. I mean, make no mistake. Erling Holland, I mean, Kevin De Bruyne, all these guys. I mean, they're unbelievable. Lionel Messi is still the best player in the world. I don't care if he's 36 or 56. It's just, he's just too good. And it shows every time, Mario. And I, I know you and I talk about it, and – we saw it, obviously, in person last season when he came to BMO. How you would waste time not watching this guy if you claim to be a soccer fan right now. Yeah. Like, he isn't 26 anymore. Like, we talk about this all the time. Do yourself a favor. Look, you might not love MLS. You might want to – you might even be one of those social media warriors who, who wants to denigrate the – whatever, okay? I won't tell anybody. If you want to watch Lionel Messi for his final few seasons of, you know, when he's in MLS, okay? Do yourself the favor. Don't be so, I don't know, caught up in just hate or just for no, <laughs> I mean, this is the greatest you've ever seen. What are you doing? Watch the man. Get as much of it as you can. What are you doing if you claim to be a fan of the beautiful game, right? Yeah. You, you don't have to tell me you're watching. You don't have to convince, you know, you don't have to like claim to be a fan even. Pretend, you know, you can even go out and fake hate just in the quiet of your own home, in the recesses of your own small mind. Watch this guy play for your own good. One thing I love to see, Dave, was uh, Messi's slide tackle on Darren Yappy. Yappy kind of used, in, earlier in the game, he kind of used his, his size and his strength over Messi to get the ball from Messi. And then Yappy was dribbling away into attack. And Messi bolted. I'm talking about just bolted straight towards him and yeah. did a slide tackle to knock the ball right back into into Miami and the crowd was was loving it because you don't really see that from Messi on the defensive side no but Messi has that feistiness in him if if he gets mad you don't want to get him mad because he gets pretty angry and you don't want an angry Messi coming at you no it's a great point though to bring up because it shows that he still wants to win and yeah. it's not hard it's not hard to see if you actually watch him even that's what I know. loved about it that's what I love to see is you just yes. saw him all of a sudden something clicked on him and, and he just bo 
bolted like with full force, full speed, straight yeah. at Yappy and got the ball back. I love yeah, that. Exactly. And it just goes again, it goes to prove he's not coming here to sit on the beach. You know, just stop with all that. If you're a hater, mm-hmm. whatever, just put that aside and do yourself the favor because the guy is hustling around, busting his butt, like Mario said, at 36 years old to go win a ball back. Even if, so what? So what if he's angry and that's why he does it, right? Now look, yeah, there's not nobody plays forever. We see it with every athlete. And and I've said this before. I've said it on social media, Mario. I I, I sports hated Michael Jordan as a, you know, from Cleveland, fan of the Cavaliers, all Cleveland sports teams too. You can't sports hate anybody more than Michael Jordan if you're a Cavaliers fan, right? He killed us over many years. But I'd, I'd kill to have one more game to see him play in his prime. I'd love to see him play again, right? I'd love to see Wayne Gretzky put the skates on in his prime when he was the best player yeah. ever, right, in the world. I'd love to see that one more time. And but I can you feel still the can. hate on Jordan, Dave, from you. I can feel the hate on Jordan. This is the third episode now where you're mentioning Michael Jordan in the LAFC Plus podcast. Yes, but it goes I'd still deep. Go it goes deep. I'd still yeah. go watch him, right? I, wa- I yeah. want to see him one more time. I'd love to see, you know, some of the greats, Willie Mays, play one time and, you know, never got a chance to. Like, don't waste it. Don't be stupid about wasting it. This is Lionel Messi. So, and he does it again coming back from injury. We're going to see how he can do if he plays coming up in the uh, CONCACAF Champions League, by the way. That's, they got a tough task, no doubt about it. For those, Dave, that thought Inter Miami was just going to be like cruising through MLS and dominate. You're starting to see what you and I were talking about in week one of the LAFC podcast where the schedule is jam-packed for Miami. There's some injuries. There's going to be a lot of rotation. And Tata Martino, he has a very, very tough job to do when, mm-hmm. when Messi is out and there's rotation because I don't know if you noticed, but his lineups have looked very different in the last few games. Yeah. And some guys, some of those guys are like out of position, out of place. And honestly, it's it's a hard job is what I'm seeing for, for Tata sure. Martino. Well, they're hanging by a thread in Champions League. So if they do get knocked out of that, which obviously they want to win CONCACAF Champions Cup, I should say. They're hanging by a thread, though. They could be out as we do this. You know, we do these podcasts earlier in the week and they're playing. Um, if you're listening to this later in the week, they may already be out of CONCACAF Champions Cup. So that would make a difference, too, then, Mario. He can then go back. You know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. have a lot on their minds right now. No doubt about it. True. But... But yeah, I mean, it's not going to be an easy task. And, you know, then you start thinking of the heat of the summer, the travel, unlike any other league in the world, essentially in MLS. I mean, maybe you can say the Russian Premier League or whatever. You know, there's the long distances. You're going from Seattle to Miami, stuff like that. You know, it's insane. I mean, it's, you know, they, they get they get nervous in England over a 200 mile road trip to go see a team. You know, like that's some, wow. You know, like you went, you traveled yeah. all three hours on a bus. You know, it's like, Please, they're taking six-hour, you know, airplane trips in MLS, you know, one way. So it's going to add up. You're right. I mean, we'll see how it uh, plays out. But so far, it's been an already an incredible start to this season, no doubt. And it continues for uh, LAFC yeah. Saturday at Portland Timbers. Oh, gosh. Speaking of sports hate, awful, awful. The Portland Timbers, just <laughs> terrible. So this is an interesting matchup, Mario. You do yeah. have Jonathan Rodriguez starting to find his way a little bit, right? He signed recently. Yeah. Uh, I hate the Timbers, but they're always a tough team to play against, especially up there at Providence Park. They have an atmosphere that is, uh, you know, very difficult to play in. Yeah. So this weekend we saw familiar face John McCarthy, right, with the Galaxy, and now coming up this weekend we get to see another familiar face <laughs> in right. Maxime Cropo, right? That's right. And. Look out for the dangerous 25-year-old Brazilian, Evander. Mm-hmm. Evander is very dangerous. And then the, Tim- the Timbers' newest, most expensive player, most expensive star is the Uruguayan forward. Like you said, Jonathan Rodriguez, who has scored at Cruz Azul. He's scored at Club America. He scored with the national team. So Portland, they have a, a pretty dangerous team. And on that turf in Portland at Providence Park, another tough road match for LAFC. We'll see how they respond to that one. And I always hate to give credit to Portland, but you even just have to look at their last match just this weekend oh, at what a Sporting fight. Kansas City. Tough place yeah. to play. Down 3-0 at halftime. Yeah. Like, just awful. They give up a goal late in the first half. It's like, oh, my goodness. This is just going absolutely going south. 
they get three goals in the second half to get a point on the road. That is that is not easy. That is incredible, frankly. And so you have yeah. to tip your cap to them, no matter how much you hate them. Uh, they're going to be tough to beat, especially at home. Something's so going on with Sporting good. KC, though, right? There's, something's going on with Sporting Twice. KC. This is the second time second that they time. had a meltdown at home. Losing 3-0 leads, well, 2-0 lead to the Galaxy and losing 3-2 to two earlier mm-hmm. in the season. You're right. And now they lose a 3-0 lead to only get a draw. That's like a, that's that's losing 3-3 right there, yeah, right? I always kind of joke that about that. That feels like a loss. Yeah, yes. they lost 3-3. Portland yes. Timbers won. They three won to three, for sure. You know, on yeah. Saturday. So they're going to be climbing, feeling high, you know, feeling good and, and, and feeling good about themselves, climbing up the standings yeah. with a, even just a point like that makes you feel like you're going to now start winning games. That's why LAFC have to come in and just put the hammer down and and get their first win on the road. I can't believe I'm saying that still. We're looking for our first point on the road. Yeah. So that you know that's going to change soon, and hopefully it is coming up Saturday. Don't forget, 1 o'clock Pacific time for the pregame on ESPN LA 710. And if you're a fan of this podcast elsewhere around the country, you can easily listen to our games if you want to hear the broadcast on the radio at the ESPN LA app. It's tremendous. So easy. Hit the uh, LAFC-specific button there on that ESPN LA app. Boom. Done. And you're listening to the broadcast uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> if you And if you don't like my uh, broadcast of the games, you can tell me that too, but that's fine. But yeah, we'd love to hear from you about LAFC Plus or anything else you want to talk about. I'm at, at Talk Soccer. He is at I am Mario Ruiz uh, and uh, on Twitter and on uh, 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 Instagram, Mario. Wrapping up, final words. We'll give them to you, Mario Reese. What are you What are you thinking, baby, as we uh, exit this show? One more thing that I want to keep an eye on just really, really quick before we leave here is to keep an eye on Cucho Hernandez because something mm-hmm. odd is happening over there in Columbus with Cucho Hernandez. He picked up a red card uh, in the last match where he was laying on the ground and he kind of just shoved both of his spikes up at the D.C. player, uh, which is kind of odd for me. And then I know he has been disciplined earlier in in the season uh, a couple games ago and and he wasn't in the starting 11 and then another game he's pulled off the pitch and he's kind of like angry with with the team and something's happening there with Cucho and I'm not really sure, but we need to keep an eye on that, you know, as the season progresses, we'll keep an eye on what's going on with Cucho and Columbus and their manager, uh, Wilfred Nancy over there, who possibly, they say, you know, could be getting something in, in England, another job in England. So that's Rumors something Rumors swirl around a guy like that, no doubt. But yeah, we'll keep an eye on Cucho with that. That's a great shout, actually. It's uh, never easy to repeat in sports and these are part of the reasons why sometimes things come up, things happen, and all the all of a sudden, one of the best players in the entire league too, one of the most yeah. exciting oh, yeah. young best players in the league. I just want to keep an eye on him. Yeah, great call. Well, it was a great show. It was a great weekend. Two one over LA Galaxy yeah. is always good by me. But now Where's you got to turn the page. Where's my flag yeah. at? Let's go. We got to turn the page. Now you got to go win on the road. Exactly at Portland Timbers, and we'll uh, be joining you with that on uh, one p.m. Pacific time for the pregame on ESPN LA 710 in the ESPN LA app and then kick off after that uh, at Portland Timbers at Providence Park. Mario, great stuff as always. Great stuff, Davey. He, he is Mario Rees. I'm Dave Dunholm. Thank you so much. This is LAFC Plus. Go black and gold.